We'll have Glenn next. Can everyone hear me? Great. All right. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the planning committee for allowing us to be here and Chair Professor Fred Rivera, so thank you. Um, to say that these past few days have been extremely stimulating is just a severe understatement. It's an honor to be with some of the greatest minds in bullying research. Um, and to start off, I really wanted to just point out um, like how astute, I felt that Professor um, Juvenin's analysis on ethnic diversity um, being a key factor and a key lens to analyze like who is being marginalized in particular. Because um, what really jumped out to me was that like a lot of students just think, why me? Because it's very easy to just scapegoat racism or something else to be that reason. And so um, I believe that on the micro level, teachers should be encouraged to analyze why someone is being targeted in particular. Because um, often these vulnerabilities are what, what is exactly being exploited. And so if the teacher's aware of it, maybe they can actually do something to stop it. Um, and yeah, and um, something else that really point, like, was really poignant was the fact that like, one friend like, reduces the chance of being bullied. So I think that maybe it should be integrated into curriculums, like more group work should be integrated into curriculums. Because you know, targets are often introverts and don't really put themselves out there. And so, and so if, they're, if they're seen as like, that weird kid on the side, like, ha incorporating, group, incorporating group works, like frequent kind of like speed dating type of things, but in an educational type of frame. <laughs> If you have that, it sort of humanizes the victim, and maybe, maybe they would, maybe it wouldn't necessarily be like a friend-making type of thing. But if you have, if you have someone who's instead like Jimmy, instead of that weird kid on the side, maybe next time, maybe next time Jimmy is seen being bullied, someone will step up. So that could be that could be something that's um, that could be pretty helpful. And um, you know, who knows, maybe they could end up finding someone compatible if you're being forced to be in that group work and create that friend and create that strong sort of social network that prevents the bullying. So incorporating that into curriculum is uh, pretty important. Um, I also like Professor Vayankor's points, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, um, by uh, directing like trauma and depression and low cortisol levels to um, like co correlating that with people who are being bullied. And I feel like this point needs to be emphasized when you're pushing for legislation that, that helps out the marginalized because it really, in my opinion, adds complete legitimacy to the issue if you're comparing it to people who are killing, who are killing themselves and people who have been through like, traumatic experiences such as the Holocaust. If, that, if their brain chemistry is showing similar things, that's super legitimate, that's awesome. Um, yeah, and before I go on what was missing, I just wanna commend um, um, namely, Professor Abrams, Professor um, Farris, and Professor Rohrbach, and there were a few others as well. Um, but I just really like the concise uh, PowerPoints that were that were up there, and like the emphasis on the graphs. Um, I thought that was pretty important because if once if you're in a session all day where you're pushing out high volumes of information, and like I don't even have a BA, you all are PhDs. Like I'm, I'm trying. We're all trying to process this, um, these high levels of information. It's I. Personally, anyway, personally speaking, anyway, um, I, I think it's more important to listen to exactly what's going on to process it all rather than read a bunch of information and then also trying to listen. So it's kind of, I don't know, but just putting that out there. So I just wanted to commend the professors who did do that. Um, and a major factor that I thought was overlooked was um, just the self-esteem and phys and like validation of like phys like actual validation and confidence of the victim. Now, they say that um, as millennials, we're entering an age of narcissism. For those who are in like, the higher echelons of like, the social pyramid, um, it could be, like, that could be a good thing as far as like, external validation. Um, yeah, um, external validation for like, your success and who you are and everything. Like, Facebook likes is a huge thing. So if you're getting a lot of Facebook likes, you're considered popular, you're considered the man, that girl, whatever. But, those who are targeted, those who are marginalized, they're not getting those Facebook likes. And as we're entering a time where less people are spending, less people are spending time with their parents and more, like children anyway, um, spending less time with their parents and more time with the computer. So if you're in an environment where you're, you're bullied all the time, am I taking too much time? Oh, sorry, I'm almost done. Um, if you're in an environment where you're getting bullied all the time or you're, ostracized in your community, and then you're online and you're not getting any sort of external validation, which is what is important as far as self-esteem these days, as far as kids, as far as, um, kids go. Like, you're not getting that at home. You're not getting that 
at school and you're also not getting that and like often these kids come from the broken homes as well so where are you really getting that external validation where are you getting that self-worth that's a real that's a really big issue so in my opinion there needs to be a campaign that encourages students to love themselves and um, like a self-worth campaign, the love yourself type of thing, um, where it brings out those talents or quirks seen as odd, like quirks seen as oddities to some could be passions for others. And some, somehow, some way we need to eliminate the importance of external validation and have people really recognize their self-worth because, I mean, we're all people, we're all meant to be alive and we all should be, love ourselves. That's all I have to say. <laughs>